All right, let's talk about the third feature. It happens quite frequently that you end up with matrices that are singular. In other words, matrices whose columns are linearly independent or whose rows are linearly independent. Those two statements for square matrices are actually equivalent. It's one of those magnificent counting theorems in linear algebra. So you might be working on some math problem or some physics problem or some engineering problem or some geometry problem, and you end up with a matrix that describes it. And you know from the physics or from the engineering of it that the columns of the matrix are linearly dependent. You know that the matrix is singular. That actually tells you one of the eigenvalues. And that eigenvalue is zero. And anything from the null space corresponds to that, to that zero eigenvalue. Let's see why that is so. So we've talked about the dial pad matrix before. I forget in what context. But we remember that the middle column is the average of the other two. It might not be so easy to see, but once you've seen it, you can unsee it. So we know that about the dial pad matrix. That means, think about how you would translate that to the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue zero as I'm drawing the brackets. And of course, the eigenvector that brings out this feature of the columns is one, negative two, one. We saw it before, I think we were talking about the row reduced echelon form, as the basis vector for the null space of this matrix. It's this matrix that brings out this relationship among the columns in such a way, actually, that the result is 0, 0, 0. So now that we know the result, we're in the position to ask the eigenvalue question. Is the result a multiple of the input vector? Is it the input vector times some number? And the answer is yes. And that number is 0. So lambda equals 0 is an eigenvalue, and 1, negative to 1, is the corresponding eigenvector. So an eigenvalue can very much be zero. Here is the uh, poster child for the zero eigenvalue matrix. However, the eigenvector can never be zero. It always has to be a non-trivial vector. Why? It's because eigenvalue, we're interested in eigenvalues and eigenvectors, partly because they describe the matrix. They tell us something about the matrix. In fact, if we know all the eigenvalues and all the eigenvectors of the matrix, we actually know the matrix itself. We can determine every entry of that matrix. Try and think about why that's true. So now, what, what if we consider the zero eigenvector? Well, we know that any matrix times the zero vector, the result is a zero vector as well, or the zero vector. So saying that the zero vector is somehow an eigenvector of the matrix is not helpful because it doesn't say anything about anything special about the matrix. It's true for any matrix. Also, you'll have a hard time determining the multiple and so forth. So all of that is an aside. So an eigenvalue can very much be zero. In most situations, it's one of the most interesting eigenvalues. It tells you that the matrix is singular. Having a zero eigenvalue and being singular are actually complete synonyms. So it's a very valuable eigenvalue, but the eigenvector should be some non-trivial vector from the null space. That's very important. What about this matrix? Again, moving on. So in this matrix, why did I write this matrix out? It's very easy to see the relationship among the rows. You might not be able to see the relationship among the column. It's probably mind-bogglingly, mind-bogglingly, mind-bogglingly complicated. But the relationship among the rows is very easy to see because the last row is the sum of the first two rows. I think you can see that rather easily. So by the transpose argument that A and A transpose have identical eigenvalues but different eigenvectors generally, you can conclude that this matrix also has an eigenvalue of zero. But the corresponding eigenvector will require a little bit of work. Of course, in this situation, you know that even without the A and A transpose having the same eigenvalues argument, because there's the one of the grand counting theorems of linear algebra that say that no matter what the matrix is, the number of linearly independent columns equals the number of linearly dependent rows. One of those gifts from God. So in this matrix, we clearly have only two linearly independent rows. The third one being there, any third one, any of the rows is linearly dependent on the other two. 
So only so we only have two linearly independent rows. Therefore, we only have two linearly dependent columns. Therefore, there is a non-trivial null space. Therefore, there is a zero eigenvalue. And the eigenvector requires a little bit more work. All right, let's move on to the next feature.